Hey, Ross World, my money makes money. This is a reminder for rewards. I talked about it last year quite some time ago, and this is about rewards. Now, if you're taking a trip and you're using a plane, do you have a number, a Sky Miles number, a bonus number, a air number, whatever that particular airline may call it, do you have a number so you can start accumulating miles and rewards? See, don't just buy a ticket and don't have a rewards program. And I'm not saying be dedicated to one airline or another. Of course, you're going to go with the most frugal airline ticket that you can possibly afford. Now, once you do that, whether it be Southwest, go and look at Southwest website and sign up for the rewards. So when you buy that ticket, you apply that number and you start to accumulate rewards in miles. Okay. You may accumulate one or the other or both, depending on the airline. If you have, uh, let's say, for instance, Alaskan Airlines who are in partnership with Virgin, use your number, people. Go and apply on their website and get a bonus number, whatever, a, a miles number, so you can start accumulating. And you're like, what is that going to do for me now? Absolutely nothing. It ain't going to do nothing for you now. We're talking about later, guys. Over the course of five or ten years, who knows how much you're going to travel? Who knows how much you're going to fly? Get this number, and every time you fly with that airline, plug it in. Keep it on your Google Keep. Keep it on your iPhone. Use it, save it, and apply it every time you fly. Now, granted, there's so many airlines, right? American Airlines, uh, United Airlines, get, and some of these are in partnership. So when you get a number from one airline to another, make sure to see if they're in partnership so you can plug and play that number, okay? So this is just a quick reminder. See, it's not really about airlines, it's about everything that you have. If you're shopping around for a credit card, if that's your thing, then go ahead and make sure you're part of a rewards program. Maybe it's every dollar you spend, you get a dollar something cash back, or you get a dollar of gas money, whatever. Don't just be signing up for these different programs or traveling or buying things where you're not getting rewarded for your hard-earned cash. I remember a subscriber of mine told me in the comment sections, he said, I make so much money back from my credit cards because what he does is he makes sure he gets credit cards that can pay off his bills. That's not all oh, like at a regular convenience store. He can just pay off his bills. And then at the end of the month, he was going to spend that money anyway. He pays it back. They give him those rewards. They give him cash back. He gets the rewards. He goes in there. He buys things. Who knows? This is a reminder, people. Don't let these companies offer all of these great rewards programs and you just not even using them, okay? Maybe you drive a lot. Maybe there's a credit card that gives you back so much money or so many gas miles on that card with money you was already going to use on gas in the first place. Use it, don't abuse it. See, that's the thing. We are all equipped with the brain. Use it, don't abuse it. And here's a quick tip for the people out there. They want me to make a cryptocurrency video. I recently sold all of my Bitcoin, my Litcoin, and I had a little bit of Bitcoin cash. I'm going to tell you why. It wasn't because Warren Buffett said it's going to end in utterly failure. It's because I saw the decline. See, that's the thing. If you see warning signs, now in investing, you can see warning signs with these traditional stocks, but they have a track record. And I can be totally wrong, and I'm okay with that. And I just saw that it was in the green today, unless it changed. But it went from 16000 back down to 11000 Now, what if you bought in at 12000 13000 Now, the investor in me is saying, well, you don't lose money until when? You know what I'm about to say, Ross World. You don't lose money until you sell it because when it goes back up, because the investor may say, it's going to go back up. But this is technology investing. Not so much a cryptocurrency. Not so much. I would want you to invest in blockchains. 
because right now there's different companies who are developing this technology, who are making up companies based upon blockchain technology. Now, cryptocurrencies are connected to blockchains, right, in order for them to operate. What if you invest into blockchains and not so much the cryptocurrency? Because everybody in the market, the technology market, the, 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 the money markets, they're saying, I'm going to invest, I'm going to develop, I'm going to research, I'm going to develop blockchain. We're going to implement blockchain into our technology because it's phenomenal. Everything is virtual. Nothing is just on one computer. It's everywhere. So it's hard for hackers to break into, even though we know hackers can break into anything if they have enough time. But it's just much harder based upon the blockchain technology. See, if you would have bought in on Bitcoin 2011, if you would have invested $100, you would have made $3.2, $3.3 million if you would have sold it when it was 16000 Now, if you would have bought Ripple when it was 0, 0 point blah, 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 some pennies, right? And then you sold it when it hit $3, you would have made like fifty dollars or $60,000, okay? If you would have invested in Litcoin at when I did around seven seventy dollars and then with a three hundred depending on how much or how many lit coins you bought you would have made some money I know I did I sold it do I feel bad about it no because I have my traditional stock portfolio under Robinhood link in the description so this started off as a rewards video but now we're talking about cryptocurrencies and we're talking about blockchains okay now we know that they're heavily related okay because can you have a cryptocurrency without a blockchain? Answer in the comment section. But I would invest, my opinion, I would invest in the technology, not the currency. Because can you have the currency without the technology? It's a good question because right now people have blockchain RRAs. So they're taking the technology and making that now an investment. Is it because Bitcoin is failing? Is it because Bitcoin Cash is failing? Is it because Litcoin is failing? Is it because Ripple is failing? I simply don't know. But I, I tell you this. As I just released another video about Vanguard ETFs. If you're trying to make steady, progressive growth in moolah, then ETFs and index funds are your way to go. Now, I'm leaning towards Vanguard, but you can go anywhere. And if you just have to look at their history, it takes very little research because some of these people have it on their website. Okay. They have all the information on their website. You go to Vanguard, you will see all this information. You go to Charles Schwab, you may see all this information. You go to iShares, you may see all this information. So you just have to do your research. Okay. But Cryptocurrencies, blockchains, electronic ledgers, and Bitcoin mining, all this is new. This is new within the past 10 years, guys. This is new in the money world. And so investors, investors are weary, okay? Because when those investors first got in, they were taking a chance, right? They were taking a chance. But nevertheless, no risk, no reward. So I can't tell you that you should invest in cryptocurrencies or even blockchains. I'm only giving you my opinion that if I were to do it again, I would invest in blockchain technologies and no investment companies that implement that technology. Those those ETFs, those IRAs, because there's blockchain ETFs. See, I would invest in those and not really the cryptocurrencies. So hopefully that's cleared up a little bit. And granted, you can make tons and tons and tons and tons of money if, say, for instance, you went in and you bought in, uh, let's say, for instance, you have $5,000 to play with. You just got your tax money and you're like, hey, I want to invest. I want to see. And you threw it into Ripple and Ripple raised up another $3 or $6. And then you sold. You would have made a lot of money. Or you threw it into Litcoin and Litcoin raised up to $500. I think it's back up to two something now. 
but it, it raised up to $500 per coin and you sold it, you would have made, you know, some, a ton of money. I mean, depending on what a ton of money is to you, right? <laughs> but the point I'm making is this. I can't necessarily tell you what to invest in. I can only give you the information that I believe that can help you to make a conscious and a well-informed decision. But nevertheless, you know what I'm going to say. Do your research. Because when you lose money, don't blame me. When you gain money, don't blame me. Reward me. Give me some money. <laughs> but anyway, this is Ross World where we're not mindless, we're not senseless, and we're not dumb investors. Even if you're a novice, even if you're a beginner, this is how you gain the knowledge. This is how you build upon what somebody told you. You go and back it by research on multiple websites, on the website of that organization or that company or that business. It takes a little bit of time, but it'll save you a whole lot of trouble. I want you guys to understand you have all these entities to make money and you have money to play with then by all means, try it out. You may win. You may you may lose. But even if you lose, you have money to play with, okay? As far as gambling. All right, whatever. But investing is not gambling. But it could be a gamble when it comes to that. I don't know. But I'm giving you the information for you to make your own decision. I'm out.